What's going on, guys? It's your boy Joey Shake 72. And Joey Shake 72's phone is a piece of shit that's got to go in the trash because it works when it wants to and it doesn't when it doesn't. So we're going to do this video. All right. So. Jim Schwartz and this fucking defense today. You know, I read Eagles news that the defense, the defensive line, have a top ten defensive line this year, and I think they could be higher. They could definitely be in the top five defensive line this year. Uh, I'm just gonna call it out. Derek Barnett, you know, Lane Johnson says nice things about Derek Barnett. He's looking good, good technique, good bend around the edge. And I'm going around him in tackles. I know it's OTAs, but when Lane Johnson, the best right tackle in football, says fucking Derek Barnett looks really good, you better believe it. It's good news. We cannot fucking ignore it. Can I ignore it? Can I ignore it? Can I ignore it? Can I ignore it? So we're going to keep doing this like this. Okay? So now you got Brandon Graham, defensive end. Who are you going to block? I don't know. This is hard for teams. Now... Vinny Curry's got to fucking just do better because he, you know, fucking played with an MCL injury the whole damn year. And then you got, man, then you got Timmy Jernigan uh, walked into this team, was very surprised he was traded here. 4-3 defense, something that he could just shoot the gap. What Jim Forts likes to do is a 4-3 wide nine defense. So he's just going to shoot the gap, see what he can do. He's really excited about it. He don't care if it's a one-year deal. He's going to prove his worth, and playing, he says it's going to be a dream playing next to next to Big Fletch, which Big Fletch has to have a better fucking year this year. Um, Benny Logan was just too expensive, couldn't keep him. You know, we are, you know, we're already talking about this shit like you guys don't know. So, Benny Logan was just too expensive, couldn't keep him, whatever. Um, and that was it. I mean, and it's going to be a combination of things is that just say we walk into a game where the other team has some injuries on the offensive line. They have some backups that Jim Schwartz knows that he's definitely going to take advantage of. So who knows? They might switch Barnett and fucking Graham around. They might switch Fletch to another. You know what I mean? It, 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 he could. Uh, let me tell you, Jim Schwartz has a lot of toys to play with this offseason. So he's got a lot of toys. Okay, and he's going he's gonna to put the batteries in them. He's going to check them out and he's gonna see what they can do. And that's it. So, all I can say is, who are you going to block? I'll be surprised if no one gets free every play. Even if they don't make a play, if someone gets free, I'll be happy. Who are you going to block? Timmy Jernick is the top 5 D tackle against the run. 13 sacks, 3 years. On a rook off a rookie contract. 24 years old. Then... Brandon Graham is in the prime of his career. One of the best DNs in the league. Probably the best defensive end that hurries and gets to that quarterback. That makes the quarterback move and collapse the pocket. Fletcher Cox. Timmy Jernigan can take one-on-ones. So who are you going to double team? You want to double team Fletch? No. They're going to they're gonna try. Benny Curry. He's got to work on a contract. Got to got to work for his money's worth. Otherwise, out the door. Sign Timmy Jernigan. Take out Vinny Curry. Keep Derek Barnett and just get some depth behind him. Right. Then you got Chris Long. Yes, old as fuck. He still got it though. He has probably juice left in him for another year or two, maybe three. Who knows? But the guy. Had a good amount of sacks with the Patriots last year. Had 60-something Had a very, very, very good year with the Patriots. And um, I, I honestly think that having him there is a security blanket for that position. Because honestly, if I don't trust in Vinny Curry, if, 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 if Derek Barnett, you know, is having trouble, which I highly doubt, Chris Long will be in there. Clean it all up. And... You know, the difference between Billy Davis and Jim Schwartz. Billy Davis was Mr. Pat on the back. Fucking, oh, great day of OTAs, guys. Let's, we're, you know, great day. You know, it's one of those. Jim Schwartz is like, look, we have a good practice. Good. The better, it's all going to, the pieces are going to fall in place the more we do good in practice. But we're not going to talk about it. We're not going to rave about it. We're not going to act like we're something because you don't prove a damn thing until you play your first fucking game until you get through the season. Then at the end, then you know 
what kind of team you are. Just think about it, guys. We switched defenses a few times already the past few years, and we don't even have a fucking identity. So hopefully this 4-3, which I like more than the 3-4, this 4-3 really... We, ha we get an identity next year with this D-line. Make our fucking corners look good. Okay. And that's it. Am I high on Patrick Robinson? Fuck no, I'm not. He fucking played like shit. Not for first round talent that fucking never lived up to it. Went to the Saints. Played with Malcolm Jenkins. Fucking then went to the fucking Colts. And then, you know, got burned there. So I'm not high on him. But they've had Jalen Mills on the outside. They've had Rasul Douglas on the inside as the nickel corner. And that's fine. And it's great with nickel guys because if he can cover, you know, a slot receiver, he's got long arms. He's got good fucking height. He's over 200 pounds. So cool. That's awesome. Probably the best position for him is that inside. But then when he gets better, who knows? If he looks faster, if he gets faster, he'd probably switch to outside. Don't know yet. Sidney Jones situation, it's still on the back burner. It's still a high hope for us that we have a shutdown corner. So I'm happy that they're not going to fucking force him. I hope they don't force him, sit him the fuck out. That's it. Let that happen. Um, just have some faith with this D because the D, not even just, not even. Look, our corners, yeah, they're going to fucking blow sometimes. But look at it this way. You get pressure every fucking play when guys switch in and out. When you have good depth on a 4-3 wide 9 defense and they're switching every five plays, you keep fresh bodies in there to fucking get to that fucking hole. And you know what? Those guys that come in second or come in back up to the second row of, D, uh, of the D-line can have can tire out an offense. It can tire out an offensive line. And that's what this defense is for. It's to collide the damn pocket, linebacker step up wherever wherever there's a gap, and fucking go after the quarterback, go after whoever gets the fucking ball, and that's it. So I'm just letting everybody know that this league is on notice of this damn team, and that's it. Defensively, sure. Offensively, I think they're going to be pretty fucking beast. Okay, and everyone's got to start fucking believing. Because honestly, I wasn't a big fan of Sam Bradford. I wasn't... Um, I wasn't a fan of what we were the moves we were doing. We just had to accept them. I never been upset about trades like I did in 2015. I was upset about all those trades. 2014, all those trades. Whatever. Letting go of good players. This shit is over with fucking put it in the fucking past. It's fucking done with. It's over. Just fucking stop with this talking about this old bullshit. Okay, yeah, fucking blue. But think of it this way. If we had our team from 2013, right? 2014. If we had our team, right, we would have had 30-year-old LaShawn McCoy. That's still productive. 30-year-old Jeremy Macklin that's injured prone as fuck and is getting hurt at Kansas City like fucking crazy. Okay? We would have had to start all over again. We didn't, we, we, we didn't even have a franchise quarterback. Nick Foles, yeah, but we don't know what was going to happen with that. Good. We don't know. We do not know. Okay? But... Maybe it was a blessing in disguise because now we have a franchise quarterback. Now, now we have the young fucking pieces to grow with this offense and grow with this defense. Now we really don't have to fucking start over. Now we don't have to do what we... If, if we had all those players still, paying all those players, couldn't keep them all. Wouldn't happen because they're all going to want more money. And at the same time, it's a blessing because now we got our franchise quarterback. Our offensive line is stacked with fucking depth now. And there's so much potential with Chance Warmack. Isaac Samalo's getting reps at the left guard spot because Alan Barber's being a fucking pussy bitch with his calf. Look at the bright side. All right, our corners are going to fucking blow. Okay? They might blow. And it's fine. It's not fine. But it's got to be fine because we have no choice. Okay? 
that they're not going to suck like last year badly like that, okay? Because anyone's better than fucking Nolan Carroll. Okay, if Patrick Robinson can step up, I'll be happy with it. I don't think he completely fucking sucks, but he's like another Leotis McKelvin with no reassurance at all. And it's just like, okay, they were backed into a corner and they had to get somebody because they were not, not paying A.J. Bouye fucking all that buco fucking money. Not happening. So, they go get someone like Patrick Robinson... And you fucking draft two corners. One that's on the back burner right now. Sidney Jones. They got plenty of fucking... I am so happy about the Sidney Jones pick. Let him... Let him sit. Let him recover. You act like the guy is going to get up and not know how to play fucking football again. He's a top 10 pick. Okay? The guy is a fucking baller and he's a fucking monster. And he's always around the fucking ball. And if, and if he gets beat... He always finds a way to keep the ball out of the receiver's fucking hands no matter what. Good hand-eye coordination, uh, hand-eye and feet coordination while tracking the ball. It's fucking amazing when you look at his highlight tape. So, we have a lot to fucking fight for this year. All right, like I said, no Super Bowl, okay? I'm not. I want an increase in production. That's all I want. And th that we're not not here, not here, not here, like here. All right? Up here. That's what I want. All up here. Okay? Not, oh, this guy's flashy, this guy's, oh, he's flashing, well, really not. I'm like, I'm done with this. I hate when people talk about players, oh, well, he flashes, like, oh, you know, he yeah, makes some good plays, and, you know, it flashes during the season. I'm like, flashes during the season mean he fucking sucks, okay? So let's just get that out of here. Like, when, so when a player flashes, it means he fucking sucks. It doesn't mean he's good. It doesn't mean he's fucking great. It means he sucks, okay? So let's get that over with. Okay, so everyone, like, we got something to fight for this year. This fucking division is going to be fucking ours or getting the wild card, whatever the fuck we got to do to win. I don't care, okay? I do not fucking care because when the season starts, all hell is going to break loose. And let me tell you, Rival fans are going to continue to talk about the rings because they have no more excuses, okay? So when they lose, you finally won one. I mean, you're just going to hear it, and it's never going to stop. So as soon as you win a fucking game, if you have people in your area that you fucking hate the most that just don't leave you alone, you fucking win a game, and you throw it in their fucking face, we're coming for you. We're coming for you. You can't run anywhere. We coming. We on a rise. We on a rise. And that's it. So, why is my face so red? Fuck. I don't know. I'm like, how does shit? I'm like, so, let's fucking go. Enough's enough with this fucking, this depressing. Fu Look, I have already got the biography fucking comments about, oh, Philly fans been through a lot. Like, fuck that, bro. Fucking pick your balls up and let's roll with it. Let's roll with it on the road to fucking victory. I'll see you guys later on the next Joey Shake 72 show. That's not even a show. I just made that up. So, I'll see you guys later. Fly goes fly.